very happy to be here. I uh, would like to share with you some uh, recent uh, research on um, semiotics uh, software and uh, what is with something which is called uh, recently media visualization. And um, I think it, 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 uh, there is a, a close uh, link with uh, what you have presented and I uh, hope we can discuss afterwards. <laughs> yes, okay, so um, what the kind of images that I, am, that, that I um, that got uh, my attention at the first were uh, this uh, this kind of this kind of uh, images. So as you can see, we have we, we of course we see we, we can we can see some things we can uh, describe we can uh, we have uh, some elements visual visual uh, elements. But um, this kind of non-figurative it's kind of abstract. So. Uh, this is the kind of images that, that, that uh, got uh, my attention, as I said, and um, I will try to um, analyze them and try to describe some of the, the some of the making sense of these kind of images uh, from two point of view point of views. Uh, from from one part, we have uh, you know Levmanovich, who has uh, recently called and uh, coined this uh, term media visualization. I've been uh, working with him in a couple of projects, so I, I, I am interested in adding this semiotic layer to, to, to research. And on the other hand, we have uh, Jacques Fontany, who has been uh, also uh, published some articles, very interesting articles on uh, scientific imagery. So uh, first, what is uh, media visualization? It's um, briefly speaking and uh, perhaps very simplifying, <coughs> It's about uh, visualizing large amounts of uh, visual media, visual images. And that's photographs, comics, uh, TV, uh, films. And, uh, and the, uh, the main idea is that when you visualize all those uh, images, you have different uh, methods, models, and uh, depictions. You will try to detect some patterns, and uh, you will start analyzing or studying culture. So uh, scientific imagery, what is, what, what's that? It's, uh, of course, images uh, produced synthetically with a computer or computer methods. And uh, Jacques Montagny says that it, it allows to see the invisible. Because, of course, we are talking about some processes in the, in the mind, perhaps. Or uh, maybe we are trying to use those uh, tools to see what uh, something is hiding, you know, uh, 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 disease or tumors, cancers. So. Um, requires some uh, scientific experience in, in order to uh, um, uh, understand the, the, the visual uh, material and, and this, is, this is important so and it's, it, it's uh, construct in a scientific argument. So what, what does it look like? Uh, the first example here is uh, the production of Van Gogh uh, paintings and uh, what Lev Manovich did was uh, that he uh, analyzed, extracted visual features, visual uh, uh, properties of those images, and then he just plot into the space and uh, just to have a graphical connection. So on, on the x-axis, you have the, the years, well, time, and on uh, y-axis, you have uh, visual elements, visual properties, such as, in this case, saturation and brightness. So there you have different kind of... Uh, organizations of the content. And scientific imagery, just to come back to the first image, it's a, a uh, representation, it's a uh, simulation of, in this case, a biological system, it's a protein. So um, what if we use this uh, kind of tools or this kind of software from uh, one domain into, a, into another? What if we try to use a software from, for uh, scientific imagery because, you know, Imag images, they are not used only by, by, by culture, not only by uh, filmmakers or uh, people from, from uh, culture, but also in other domains such as uh, science. So um, there is a different approach. Uh, this approach is mediated through uh, software, and this is what I am going to now focus on. So, um, yes, next please. There is, uh, according to uh, Jacques Fontany, the, the, the expression plane using this software for, for scientific imagery it's uh, transducting measurements, visual measurements, or uh, measures from uh, some other uh, domain, and then to transduct this into material measurements of material elements that exist. And uh, the content plane, the content uh, plane, is produced by direct interpretation during exploration. 
So next, please. Uh, this is, uh, I'm, I'm gonna maybe skip this one because you, you, will, you, can, you can of course get into more detail on, on uh, the articles by uh, Jacques Montagny, what the, those are uh, free uh, and accessible from his website. But what, what, what's very interesting is that he will just, um, he adds on, on the number fir the first, um, the first part, the number one, he adds that uh, scientific experience is very important to understand the conceptual experience, which are conventions, visual conventions that we see in an image. And uh, then you have, uh, that contributes to the visual experience, and then you have sensory experience. And because we are dealing with scientific um, analysis, we, we just um, have uh, to make some intervention in the, in the real world, I mean, take a decision on what we are seeing uh, through these processes. So uh, uh, this is, um, this, this exists, this, sh this schema exists in uh, his, uh, his papers. <coughs> and uh, now, what about media? So um, can we say that, is there or are there some things invisible in visual media? From the point of view of semiotics, well, they are not really invisible, but uh, we don't see often or we don't put really attention on them. They, those are, as, a, as group Moon has said, plastic elements. And, uh, for me, that, that's uh, visual features, plastic elements that we see, but we don't always uh, really count every color that we see in an image. So we don't really, uh, uh, I know, think about the high levels of saturation, contrast, or, 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 or um, things like that. So I'm gonna show you some examples. The other is, um, maybe it's other things that we don't see in, vi in visual media, it's, spatial and temporal patterns because we are used to see media in uh, the classical way, you know, when you have, uh, in cinema you have images and one image uh, um, transposes to the other one and then you start seeing the movement. But what if we see different? And uh, how, how software, uh, what's, what's the, the role or the, the main point of using software? So this is just a, uh, a screenshot of uh, the extraction of a large collection of images. You have an image, you, have, you use a software where you extract visual features, visual features according to the group new. Uh, in Liege, you have at least chromatic um, holorems, texturems, and um, formems. But in here, what you see is that we have, it's like extracting all those features and then put them in, a, in an Excel uh, spreadsheet as a database. And there you have those, uh, those kind of um, measurements. Uh, Lev has done uh, almost 400 visual features. So that's what you see in an image. You can, you can count them. And of course, you can uh, add metadata. You know, you can add something like when was the year when the image was produced, the technique, the author, and the place, and things like that. So we can plot and then make uh, different kind of visualizations of that. So next please, this is a zoom. What, what does it look like? So you know we here, for instance, we have the title, we have the main directory where we locate the picture, and then you have all kinds of measures. So that this is how you, 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 you saw, how you see what Lev did when, when he plots images. Next please. And uh, then I will move into, um, into visual patterns and spatial and temporal patterns. And uh, I, I got, I got uh, inspiration from this uh, TV series, Game of Thrones. And uh, I, was, I was looking forward to, to show this to Carlos because, you know, King Thrones is the one who uh, um, transmit that narrative. So I, uh, I got inspired by Game of Thrones and I said, well, I will, I'm going to just to use my, my ideas. Take a small sequence from the main title entry. You know, it's, you have cuts, as we are used to in film studies, cuts. I took one, which is five seconds, about 150 frames. So uh, what I did is that this, these 150 frames, I just flat all them, and next slide, please. And this is what you see. If you, if you flat all those 150 uh, uh, frames, you will see this. So you start seeing some 
spe spatial patterns. This is, of course, a kind of using scientific imagery software. So as uh, Fontanis said, we, we, of course, we don't understand anything because we don't have any scientific experience background on analyzing culture this way. So that's why we, we need what, we, uh, what, it, what Fontanis has been studying on uh, scientific imagery. So uh, in here we start seeing, we start um, detecting or, you know, we are confront, confronted with uh, different elements on the same object that we have been uh, seeing, watching, but in, in a different way. So I said, okay, great, so what else? What else can we do? Uh, you know, in, in scientific, scientific imagery you have also um, uh, 3D models, so I, I, I said, let's produce a 3D model of this thing. So next slide, please. So this is what it, what it looks like. Of course, it's, it's, it's getting maybe more abstract, but uh, it's very, it's very, it's, it's, it's funny because uh, it, some, some, some patterns are persistent. You start seeing them. This is a 3D uh, uh, import export of the same uh, the same amount of images, and of course, because now we are in the 21st century, we can go to any 3D printer in the in the in the corner, and we can have a real object. Next next slide, please. So I, I just took the liberty and I just print this uh, 3D object. So I, my object of analysis is not anymore only the film, you know, but also this is a, a, a small 3D object. This is 16 centimeters by seven seven centimeters. So I, I can just hold my element of analysis, you know. It's, it's, a, it's a movie, it's part of the movie. So it could be, of course, for the people who don't have this scientific experience previously, it's more like a bone, you know, like Jacques Fontaine says that this is, this is good because it's always, uh, it's good for scientific dissemination also to have those kind of, you know, different uh, references to the mundane world, as he says. So next, please. What about software operations? And this is my, my third and last part of uh, what is the visual, of visual media. So software operations, we use software, and uh, you know, I come from also hypermedia and hypertext, and uh, in here we have been uh, uh, seeing that from the expression plane, we have this architectonic space. Those are uh, visual and uh, visual elements on the screen, and on the other side you have the semantic space, which is the, the, the main type of representation that, of operations that you are doing. For instance, if you click on some, on, on some, on some link, uh, you, you, have, you, know, you create a semantic space where you will see if you are far from the departing and arriving point. So next, please. So software operations, of course, software such as Photoshop, they just uh, use graphical user interface to uh, um, uh, allow the user to use um, visual features, okay? So you, this is how most of the time we use them. But uh, next slide, please. Can we, of, the question is, uh, can we analyze software as a narrative structure? Can we, can we start thinking like, is it recurring patterns, you know? Is it like a cycle when we are, Ripped out in a photo, like using analyzing software in the same narrative. Next, please. And uh, but what if we go out of Photoshop? Because today we have a lot of software. So next, please. You have a lot of uh, tools that come from open open source initiatives, uh, and those all handle differently the way to uh, apply visual uh, features or visual elements. Next, please. So which are the lessons, practically speaking? Um, when uh, using uh, or when, when analyzing or visualizing uh, media, I would say that those are some of the, the just practical things. Use legends and other metadata, assemble a narrative. Narrative is very important, you know, just in, uh, and figure out how to, how to uh, present results. Uh, don't panic if your image is foster mundane reading, as I say, because this is useful for scientific dissemination. Uh, search for different visual configurations, welcome to the Society of Software, and document the scientific experience, its background for conventions and visual experience. So 
I'm sorry because I got this announcement that I was getting running out of time, so I hope it was kind of clear. So, next. Thank you. Oh. <laughs>